Every time I go onto Amazon, I see these sneaky little warehouse deals, which seem like a pretty interesting way to save some money. Although, according to Amazon, these warehouse deals are returns that don't quite meet their high standards of being a brand new product. Yeah, so that definitely raises an eyebrow. So what I decided to do for this video was buy a budget warehouse returns laptop to see if it's a legitimate way to save some money or if I'm just going to get like a box filled with war crimes and sadness. Now we're going to do a quick unboxing and see what the condition is of this warehouse deal laptop. One thing that's fairly promising is this sticker, uh, which basically says that somebody had to manually check the condition of the laptop. So hopefully that reduces the chance of us getting like a swarm of murderous bees as opposed to a laptop. Either way, we're going to have some good content happen here. Pull open this shockingly plain box and then have a look at what is probably the best laptop packaging I think I've ever seen. <laughs> look at that, it's just in a bit of bubble wrap and then in some plastic. There we go. And that is uh, the laptop that we're gonna be looking at. Now on first inspection, it is in very good condition. There is no obvious sign of damage anywhere on it. It does feel like a new device. It's fairly plasticky, but it is because it's a budget Asus laptop, so it's not going to be hewn out of mithril. But let's open it up and see what the inside of the device looks like. Uh, does it open the single hand open test? No, it doesn't. Uh, looking at... Yeah, I mean, this, this, is, this is a new laptop. Now, as far as the specs of this laptop goes, this is actually where it gets pretty exciting because it does have a Ryzen-based APU in here, which has Vega 3 graphics. It seems like it's essentially a mobile version of the Athlon 200GE, which is promising. That means we should be able to get a bit of gaming done on this very budget laptop. So I'm curious to see how it's gonna perform. There's not much ventilation on the back of it, so I think temperature's maybe a bit of an issue. Uh, and it's also only got four gigs of DDR4, which is not amazing for an APU because, well, it has to share the memory with the CPU and, and the GPU. But hopefully, hopefully we're gonna be able to play some games on it. Now the next thing that I'm going to do before we see how this thing runs is I'm going to open it up and have a look what it looks like under here. Okay, it's the moment of truth. Let's see how easily this bit of plastic pops off. Uh, maybe we're going to have to use the splooger. Okay. All you need is a tiny gap to get a finger in and then you can, you can get it going. This does not feel like something this laptop wants happening to it. But we're getting, we're getting there. Come on. So I think we've run into a bit of an impasse here because I think under this little bit, there's a screw. So Asus really doesn't want you opening up this little bad boy. So when it comes to that little sticker, it's a bit more solid than you'd imagine it to be, but you just kind of pry it off and then you get it open. There we go, that's the last screw, and let's see what it looks like under here. There we go, that's how it's supposed to come off. There we go, that is the inside of a laptop. So as you can see, there is space for more RAM, you can easily upgrade that. You have access to your Wi-Fi card as well. Uh, I think the SSD is under here, so it's an M.2 SSD. Now over here, you can see there's an empty space where an SSD or a hard drive could go. I don't see any connection points, so you can't just like, you can't just like easily drop a drive in there, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, so you do have some upgradability options and the inside of the laptop does look like it's in very good condition as well. But that doesn't necessarily mean that this laptop's actually worth getting. So let's see how it performs and if it is a usable device. Bear in mind, it is a pretty budget laptop, so the performance isn't going to be amazing. But I am very interested to see what this AMD APU can do. 
Okay, so let's power it on and see what this laptop's like to use. The display does not look amazing. Again, it is a very budget laptop, so that is to be expected. One hour later. <laughs> Asus, in search of incredible. I like how that implies that they haven't they haven't reached incredible yet. <laughs> it's like, yeah, our products are pretty lame at the moment, but one day we'll be able to make incredible products. Okay, there we go. So we can reset up Windows. So they did reinstall Windows for us on this device. It would have been pretty funny if we just got like a, a half used Windows with like a massively inappropriate porn folder on it or something. Yes, that's definitely not the most amazing display. But if you're just browsing the internet and watching YouTube videos and stuff like that, it's possible. It's not gonna make your eyes bleed or anything like that, but you can't do color critical work on it. Now again, this is a fairly pointless exercise because you're not really gonna buy this laptop to game with, but I'm still curious to see what it can handle. Now this is Half-Life 2, which is a very old game, so it should be able to handle it fine. And actually, one of the weird advantages of the very low resolution display is that it's much easier for the hardware to run games. So yeah, I guess it does have an advantage. Uh, as you can see, the GPU is running at about 80 degrees Celsius. So it's, it's having to work very hard, but look at that. When it comes to Half-Life 2, we've got 250 frames per second. Oh. Now the system is pretty brave with its setting choices in CSGO, just defaulting to high on everything. So yeah, I think, I think I'm gonna be more realistic about that. Look at that. I mean, it's not the best gaming experience ever. There's some quite big frame drops. And for some reason, when running in trusted mode, CSGO doesn't want the overlay to happen anymore. But it feels fine, you know? It's like, it's not the best gaming ex... Okay, never mind. It's, it's, you're not gonna stand much of a chance competitively playing CSGO on this laptop. But again, uh, that's, that's not the point. Let's try one more game. <laughs> So that's, that's always a good sign. So here we have the legendary GTA 5 running at 800 by 600, which is actually the resolution that Rockstar recommends you play their games at, because it's just, you know, all nice and all nice and immersive. But yeah, that's not, it's, it's not the greatest gaming experience. This is kind of like playing the PS3 version. <laughs> Shots fired. I mean, it's it's definitely a bit better than that because one of the biggest problems here is uh, if you go into settings, it tells you that you need 800 megs of of video memory for the settings that it's set at, even though it's at the lowest settings that the game supports. So a little bit more RAM may actually do a a, a world of good for the system's performance. Now after that very pointless gaming test, you can see that you can kind of do some gaming on the little Asus Vivo book, although that's not the point of the video and it doesn't really matter if you can or can't. Although for the use case that this laptop is designed for, like browsing the internet and stuff like that, the combination of the modern CPU with an SSD is more than snappy enough. I do want to do a follow-up video where I try and get the most gaming performance possible from the little APU. Now, if you're interested in that, subscribe to the channel. Those videos are usually pretty entertaining because they often go very wrong for me, uh, but yeah. So with that, let's get back to the overarching question in this video. Should you go for an Amazon warehouse deal? Because it went very well for me, right? This laptop was essentially in brand new condition and I saved some money on it. So what's not to love? Normally, these laptops sell for 500 Canadian rubles, and I bought mine for about 438 Canadian rubles, which is a fairly substantial savings considering the condition of the device. It more than covers the price of the tax that's never included in the price in the first place, which is super annoying. I don't know why America does that, but that's besides the point. And if you're a budget buyer, that's, that's really good. That savings makes a big difference. But there are a couple of caveats you should be aware of. The first one is this is a sample size of one. It went very well for me, but it could easily have ended with the invasion of Poland. You never really know how this kind of stuff goes. The second caveat, and this is a pretty big one for me, is the fact that these Amazon warehouse deals depend on people buying stuff, abusing them a bit, and then returning them. 
And what this means is that your selection is often much more limited. And even if they do have a specific device or laptop that you want, often it's a pretty weird spec of that device. So be very careful. Even if you see an awesome looking laptop, just go through the specs carefully to make sure that it isn't some terrible version that some idiot accidentally bought, right? And that's why they're returning it. But other than that, if you're a budget buyer looking for a laptop that you're just gonna use to browse the internet and occasionally battle people on Facebook because of their political differences, then an Amazon warehouse deal could be a good way to go. There's a bit more risk, but you could save quite a bit of money on a device. With that, it brings me to the end of the video. Let me know in the comment section below what experiences you've had with an Amazon warehouse deal. I wanna hear if it's turned out well for you or if you ended up having to amputate a knee or whatever. Uh, and yeah, if you enjoyed this video, like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one. Check out my Twitch stream and all of my other social media linked in the description below. And until the next video, bye-bye.